Big time heat is moving east, and we are watching two areas in the tropics for potential development. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you for another episode. We're going to be watching for record heat potential as we get into early next week beyond Father's Day weekend. So we're going to talk about that first, and then we're going to have the tropical flavor a little bit later on in the show. We'll start with Invest 90L, which is bringing a ton of heavy rain, a ton of flooding to South Florida, but it also has the potential to develop tropically in between the U.S. and Bermuda, and then we'll shift our attention to the Gulf of Mexico, Bay of Campeche. There's a possible area of development there. We'll break down some of the models coming up over the next couple of minutes. Before we get into all of that, if you want to stay updated on all things weather, you've come to the right place. Hit that subscribe button. I want to know what the weather is doing in your neck of the woods. Post that in the comments. Love to know where you're tuning in from. All right, so we're going to fast forward first and talk about the temperatures. Here is the pattern. This is the anomaly now. We'll get into part of the forecast for the northeast and parts of the upper Midwest in just one second, but here we go. Big dip in the jet stream out west. So that's where we're going to see some of the cooler anomalies in the temperature department. Nevada and Oregon, Seattle, Boise, Idaho, into Montana, parts of the Dakotas. And then we have a big ridge building in the east. So that is what is going to set us apart and send our temperatures near triple digit heat without the humidity factored in. And that's really going to be from Monday to Wednesday, maybe lingering into Thursday as well. But I want to show you this map here. And this is essentially what we're looking at here is, of course, the forecast. But where you see the different colored boxes, if it's an orange box, that means your spot or your area is going to be above average in the temperature department. And where we have a red box popping up, that means that we are really going to threaten the record either tying it or breaking it so you see there Pittsburgh 98 degrees on Monday June 17th that would tie or set a new record 97 degrees in Indy we would set a new record there Detroit not a record but really hot 97 for us 90s up to Syracuse as well low to mid 90s in Philly DC Roanoke Virginia Lexington uh, Kentucky Tons of heat coming our way. You see it kind of move to the east a little bit. Detroit, we're threatening records on Tuesday, June 18th, 95 degrees. We're back to the mid-90s in Pittsburgh. Again, this is without the humidity. Syracuse, we're going to be in record territory, 95. A new record is expected. Watch what happens as we get into Wednesday, June 19th. We have 90s as far north as Bangor, Maine. 95 in Pittsburgh, the red box popping up. That means we could have a new record settling in in the Steel City. So a ton of heat moving east. This is kind of built from all the heat that we just dealt with in the southwest corner of the United States. All right, we are going to transition into the tropics now. If you are finding this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up. But again, I want to know where you're tuning in from. Also, if you want to have another way to stay updated on the tropics without the hype, without the fear, without the all that garbage out there, if you're watching this on a bigger screen, take the camera, scan that QR code, or go to clickorlando.com slash newsletters. We are based out of Central Florida. We're based out of Orlando. That's why that is going to take you that QR code is going to take you to clickorlando.com slash newsletters. Find the Tropics Watch newsletter. Sign up. It is free. You can subscribe to that. I will visit your inbox every Monday and as needed if there's something that we want to talk about uh, in the Tropics that's not on a Monday. Here's the deal. As of June 12th, we have three little areas. One is in the Eastern Pacific, one is in the Bay of Campeche, and one is out here. That's currently Invest 90 L. We talked about what invests are. They're just a designation by the Hurricane Center that they want to start running their hurricane models on there to get more information on the system. So that is what that is. We're going to come back to the Western two in just one second. And again, that one on the Pacific side is really not going to bother anybody. But we're going to come back to the Gulf system in just one second. I want to show you what's going on as of Wednesday, June 12th in the Gulf of Mexico. You see all of that green really extending to the Bahamas, South Florida, Western Cuba, even part of Jamaica, the Yucatan Peninsula. That's where we had that deep tropical moisture. We've had a ton of flooding in South Florida. That orange represents some of the drier air that's moving through parts of Texas, uh, the North Gulf Coast, and even into Central Florida as we speak right now. Look at the rainfall totals. 
over the past 24 hours. This is estimated, but in southwest Florida, right around the Everglades and north, big time flooding has been going on. Flash flood emergencies into Miami, flash flood warnings through Fort Lauderdale, more than a foot of rain has fallen and there is still more to come over the next couple of days you see toward lake okeechobee anywhere from five to eight inches of rain uh, south of orlando really it's been that i-4 corridor and points south that's where the heaviest rain has fallen i want to show you this because these are insane numbers but i also want to make the point home that something doesn't have to have a name to be impactful and again we're seeing the extreme flooding going on in south florida all right, we're going to head back to Central America, to the Gulf of Mexico, Bay of Campeche region, to talk about this next system that could develop. And we're going to break down development chances in just one second. But this is being born now out of the Central American gyre. And what this is, it's a semi-permanent area of low pressure that does develop early in the hurricane season and then late into the hurricane season. And it's just an area of disturbed weather that every now and then will spit out thunderstorms and potentially could develop into a tropical system. And we actually have both ends, the Atlantic side and the Pacific side, uh, highlighted for that, for that same area. So I'll show you the tropical development map again. And there we go. The Central American Gyre about right here. It's going to send some tropical moisture that way and then also send some tropical moisture that way. We could have development in the Eastern Pacific and then we could have development way uh, into the Gulf, Southwest Gulf of Mexico, Bay of Campeche region. So now I want to show you some of the tropical development uh, potential here. And this is looking at the percentage for tropical depression formation. So you see Invest 90L, those brighter colors that were moving up the eastern seaboard likely staying offshore those are pretty high more greater than a 70 percent shot here as designated by the european ensembles for tropical depression development so at the very least over the next couple of days we could have a new tropical depression the first of the season in between the u.s and bermuda but then also look at this as we get into next week, this is going to be next Wednesday, next Thursday, while the Northeast is dealing with all of that heat. And that's going to be partially related to allowing this thing to develop because it can just hang out here as we have... Let me take this out. We're going to do some big time telestrating here. We're going to have that ridge of high pressure build right here. That is going to allow whatever is spit out by the Central American gyre to sit over the warm waters of the BOC and the Southwest Gulf of Mexico and just kind of hang there for a little bit. That motion as well would also likely keep it on the western side of the Gulf and Bay of Campeche. And I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about uh, in just one second. I believe that is going to be next. But I wanted to show you in real time, too, the thunderstorms associated with the Bay of Campeche before we got into that. And that's right around Central America, uh, right around the Eastern Pacific. See it right there, all the thunderstorm activity. And it's born of that. That's where we could have the development coming our way next week. Just checking up on the intertropical convergence zone. We have a couple of waves out there, juicy wave coming off of Africa. And then we have more scattered showers and thunderstorms coming to uh, the Windward Islands, Trinidad and Tobago, northern uh, South America as well. The Caribbean for the most part, nice and quiet as you would expect at this stage of the game when we're talking about hurricane season in june so here we go i wanted to show you the model progression now this is going to be the gfs and you'll notice as we go into friday so this is going to be a couple of days from now on the 14th there's a broad circulation right here that's invest 90l so we're going to watch to see if it gets tight enough to be classified as a tropical cyclone tropical depression tropical storm or hurricane think hurricanes out of the question but that's what tropical cyclones are known as on the atlantic side we also have that broad area of counterclockwise spin there so we're going to be watching that but i want to focus your attention back over to uh, the Bay of Campeche region, extreme southwest Gulf. As we get into the early part of next week, we have a little bit of tightening up here with that area of low pressure. You see that spin right north of Veracruz. There would be the area of low pressure, and there's the tight circulation. So early next week, the GFS and the Euro, for that matter, are arguing for tropical development 
uh, in parts of central Mexico, south of Texas. There's the Texas line right there. So that is something that we are going to watch. And with the rainfall forecast, and you see that rain continuing to move in to uh, parts of Mexico, we're going to watch for some flooding. Obviously, rainfall mixed with high terrain of Mexico, no matter how strong that storm is, it's going to cause some issues. So here is the progression of the model forecast in terms of the rain. You still see the super heavy stuff still to come in South Florida and over parts of the Western Bahamas, also Central America because of and the Yucatan Peninsula because of the Central American gyre and just those disorganized thunderstorms. But then you see it right here uh, in parts of Eastern Mexico into the inland areas of Mexico as well. Look at all the heavy rain up on the scale there. It's in that heavy to extreme category. So that's going to be something we watch regardless of if we get development or not for some flash flooding, for, for some mudslides in parts of Central America because of the heavy rain from the Central American gyre and then from this potential tropical system that we have working its way into parts of Mexico and maybe as far north as extreme South Texas. So for those again that were saying that the season is a bust, we could start checking off some names rather quickly here over the next seven days. And you remember in the video from last week, we talked about in kind of the long range outlook that we'd be looking in the Gulf of Mexico for maybe our, our first name storm of the season. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, really appreciate the support. Thank you for hitting that subscribe button. If you want to get a hold of me, you can post in the comments any questions. I'm on the Twitter thing, the X. Jonathan Kegis New 6 is my Facebook page. Just Weather, of course, if you found the channel, you know what our handle is there. Instagram is certified Kegis and then jkegis at wkmg.com. You can hit me up on the email side of things. And remember, Subscribe to the Tropics Watch newsletter on clickorlando.com slash newsletters. It's another way to stay up to date on the tropics. If you want to stay informed, you've come to the right place. Thank you guys a ton for the support. Thank you to all the new subscribers that have stumbled across the channel. I really appreciate it. It's been great getting to know you guys. Great meeting you guys and great having this weather conversation. That's why we're here. We'll catch you next time.